Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harrington from Learn Your Land, and in this video we are going to be discussing a particular genus of mushrooms, the Swillis genus. Now if you're interested in Belite mushroom identification and harvesting, then this may be a video for you because Belites and Swillis mushrooms are somewhat related to one another. Now if you're not familiar with Belite mushrooms, well they are essentially terrestrial mushrooms, they grow from the ground, but on the underside they typically contain pores rather than gills. They form mycorrhizal associations with various trees in the forest. Belites are typically regarded as one of the safer mushroom families to harvest for the table. And many are choice edible mushrooms like the porcini or Boletus edulis, the king bolete. Now Swillis mushrooms used to be in the same family as Boletes, however they have since undergone taxonomic revision, so now they are in the Swillaceae family. However, they are still in the same order as Boletes. So if you think back to your biology classes in high school or college, you may remember the Linnaean classification systems. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. So Swillis and Boletes are in the same order, but now they're split into two separate families. Swillis mushrooms typically grow in association with conifer trees. So think pine trees, spruce trees, fir trees, hemlock trees, larch trees. And what really distinguishes them, at least morphologically speaking, from many bolete mushrooms is that they typically contain slimy caps with a cap cuticle that can peel off. They typically contain a partial veil that covers the pore surface and that breaks to leave a cottony veil around the stem and they typically contain glandular dots on the stem as well. Now if you're looking through the woods and you find a bolete like mushroom in conifer rich woods and it contains those characteristics, you might be able to narrow it down to the Swillis genus and then from there you can probably identify down to species. In this video we are going to be discussing two edible Swillis mushrooms. Swillis pictus, the painted Swillis, and Swillis granulatus, the dotted stalk Swillis. The first mushroom we are going to start with is Swillis pictus, the painted Swillis. And we're going to start with this one because out of the two I feel it's the easier one to identify. And I have to be honest with you, even though I mentioned all those characteristics that are pretty typical for Swillis species, this one doesn't necessarily fit all those characteristics. For example, Swillis pictus doesn't even have a slimy cap and it doesn't have glandular dots around the stem. So they call it Swillis pictus. Pictus means painted, so the painted Swillis. It's a very beautiful mushroom. It looks like somebody painted it. If you look in older field guides, you might see the name Swillis spragii. And spragii is named after the Boston mycologist Charles James Sprague, or Sprague, who was reportedly the first person to collect this mushroom, at least as a mycologist. And so this mushroom is a medium-sized mushroom that you almost always find in association with eastern white pine trees, at least here in Pennsylvania. So this one is mycorrhizal with five-needled pine trees. An eastern white pine tree is a five-needled pine tree. If you're finding this mushroom somewhere else, then it's probably not that mushroom. You're almost always going to find it in a pine-rich forest, especially an eastern white pine-rich forest. Now this mushroom, as I mentioned before, has got red fibrils on the cap, so it's very velvety. If you would remove those fibrils, if you would cut through it, it would reveal an inner flesh that is yellow. Underneath, the pore surface is yellow, and it's got rather large pores that are radially oriented and angular in appearance. And it's got a partial veil on the underside, so it's covering up the pore surface at least when young. And this will often break and it'll stretch and you'll see this cottony material on the underside that will eventually drop and leave a cottony ring zone around the stem. The stem resembles the cap in appearance. It's got red fibrils and it's accented with yellow hues throughout. Now as I said, you're always going to find this mushroom, at least here in Pennsylvania, in association with eastern white pine trees. If you don't know what an eastern white pine tree looks like, Look at the needles or the leaves of various pine trees and you'll see that they are arranged in bundles or fascicles of different numbers. If you find one with three, that could be a pitch pine. If you find one with two, that could be a red pine. But here in Pennsylvania, it's almost always going to be an Easter white pine tree if you find it born in fascicles of five. Now, this is an edible mushroom. However, it does have a few look-alikes, but nothing really to worry about. One might be Swillis decipiens. However, this mushroom is typically more orange in appearance, whereas Swillis pictus is rather red in appearance. In that one, Suillus decipiens grows typically in the southeastern portion of the United States. The other one is Suillus lakei. However, this one typically grows in association with Douglas fir trees. So if you go through all those characteristics that I mentioned before and you find this red painted looking mushroom with red fibrils on the cap with yellow on the underside, and it does drop an olive brown spore print, by the way. So take a spore print before you decide to eat this, at least for the first time. And you find this in association with eastern white pine trees, and you probably do have Swillus pictus or Swillus spragii, the painted Swillus mushroom. The second mushroom we will be discussing is Suillus granulatus, the dotted stalk 
Suellus. And this one demonstrates some of those typical characteristics associated with Suellus species. This one, like Suellus mushrooms, it grows in conifer-rich forests. You can find this under eastern ripe pine trees, but also hemlock trees and spruce trees as well. Like many Suellus species, it has a slimy cap. So if you touch it, you will feel that sliminess. You can even see it. And the cap is tannish, brown colored, and this is a more squat mushroom, typically a little wider, sometimes bigger than Suellus pictus, but I find it's a little thicker in appearance. And it almost looks like a pastry is coming up out of the ground. That's what I see. Whenever I look around and I see Suellus granulatus, it almost looks like somebody threw a bunch of pastries on the ground. On the underside, the pore surface at first is a cream color, almost a light yellow, and then it eventually turns into a dingy yellow brownish color over time. And when this mushroom is young, you will see little white milk droplets being exuded from the pore surface. Usually I see this when the mushroom is young. As it gets older, you don't really see that. Now they call it the dotted stalk suellus because it's got little dots, little granulations all over the stalk. And it seems to be more concentrated near the apex of the stalk as well. And it's typically a yellowish color or a brownish color. Now there is one look-alike for Suellus granulatus, at least one that I know, and that is Suellus placidus. And it kind of looks like Suellus granulatus, however this one is typically more whitish in appearance and the stem is a bit thinner. But if you find this mushroom growing under eastern white pine trees or hemlock trees or spruce trees and it fits all those characteristics that I described before and it drops a cinnamon brown to a brown spore print, so always take a spore print if this is going to be the first time before eating this mushroom, then you might have Suellus granulatus, the dotted stalk Suellus. So what exactly are Suellus species even doing in the woods? Are they just there for our benefit? Just there for us to have great meals day after day after day? Or are they doing something different? Well, they kind of are doing something different. They are what's known as mycorrhizal fungi. Many different genera and species of mushrooms are mycorrhizal, meaning they form symbiotic relationships with various plant and tree species. In the case of Suellus, we see that with conifer trees, like pines, spruces, hemlocks, firs, and larches. Now, Suellus species form what are known as ectomycorrhizal associations, meaning the hyphae in the soil, that thread-like network, the vegetative non-reproductive structure of a fungus, they essentially form a mantle around the rootlets of the plant or the trees, and the hyphae extend into the soil, and they pull up nutrients that way, but they also extend between the cortex cells of the plant. Kind of neat, huh? Now, whenever we look at trees and plants in the woods, most plants and trees form mycorrhizal associations with various fungi. It's actually the exception for a plant or a tree not to form a mycorrhizal association. That's how beneficial it is to the tree and to the plant. And it's also very beneficial for the fungus as well. Now, when you're looking through the woods and you see how beautiful everything looks, understand that it would not look this way. It'll never look this way without mushrooms. That's how essential mushrooms are. Even if we're not interested in eating mushrooms, they're absolutely essential for life on Earth, at least at this point in time. Now here's also an interesting thought. Whenever you're looking for your choice edible mushrooms, some various species of bolete or chanterelles or some suella species and you don't find any, you come up empty handed, understand that they're still there. They're underneath your feet. There are hundreds and hundreds of species underneath your feet that just aren't making themselves known in mushroom form yet. So your timing's a little off, but they're still in the soil. And look around and when you notice trees like this one right here, perhaps the only reason this tree is here because of its association with various beletes or various chanterelles. So not all hope is lost if you don't find your mushrooms. They're still all around you. So that's a very good thought to think. Now, both species that I mentioned before, Suellus granulatus and Suellus pictus, are edible mushrooms and I do encourage you to cook them before consuming them. In the case of Suellus granulatus, the cap might be a little too slimy. It could cause digestive upset, so you might want to peel back that cuticle layer. You can just remove it and then cook it up that way. And I recommend cooking the caps, not necessarily the stems. Thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I hope you learned something about various species of suillas and bolete mushrooms as well. If you want to stay in touch with me, I encourage you to go to learnyourland.com and sign up for the email list so that we can stay in touch that way. And if you're on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay up to date with all the videos that I plan on releasing in the future. Thanks again for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. Happy mushroom hunting.